generational fairness and the tax on home equity in Canada. Welcome to the latest new tax introduction that our fabulous federal government is trying to jam down our throats yet again, which is an introduction on home equity tax because apparently he thinks that our parents' generation are loaded by the home equity that they have managed to procure just by the absolute ownership of their personal primary residence. I had a conversation many, many, many years ago with my accountant regarding a home uh, equity tax or will our government ever try to tax our primary residents? And he vehemently opposed me on this and said that it would be the death of Canada. Well, this is just yet another tax that is adding to the death of Canada. So here we are, this particular think tank uh, with our fabulous liberal government called Generation Squeeze seems to think that one of the only ways to enable the youth to afford a new home is to go after older people who have worked hard, saved enough money, bought a home and paid off their mortgage. So I'm not an accountant, but let me say in Canada, we are not allowed to write off the interest of our mortgage on our primary residence. So just for theory's sake, I want to go back. I've pulled up some stats in our matrix. 2015, the average home price was 608000 So I'm just going to go for interest sake here and use easy, clear numbers. 2016, uh, actually, let me, let me go back to this. 2015, the average home price in Burlington, I'm trying to keep it simple here, three bed, two bath, 1,500 square feet, freehold home was $608,000. 2024, basically 10 years later almost, the average home price thus far is $1.221 million. So we have seen home prices double. I just want to add here that taxation does not do anything to implement housing. Supply and demand is what actually controls the housing market. Our government tries to control our interest rates, but the reality is if we don't have enough housing for people, it's going to drive up the prices, supply and demand, basic economics. So let's talk about this. So in 2016, the average home price was 730. So I'm just going to do things in a very simple manner right now. So here we are. I said, put into an amortization calculator, $700,000 loan term, 25 years, 6% interest rate. You are paying in total, if you don't, if you just make your payments, do the business, your payment is $4,500 a month, hugely affordable. <laughs> you are paying in interest $653,000 in interest, which we are not allowed to write off. So how, if, if home prices double, so you've paid a total of 300 monthly payments to the tune of $1.353 million. Your house is now worth, I'm going to say 1.221, 10 years ago. You have gained in equity, in appreciation, supposedly on paper, if we're not allowed to deduct the interest, you have gained $600,000. But we've paid in interest $653,000. That's just the payment. That's not the property tax. That's not the carbon taxes. That's not the utilities. That's not the taxes on the utilities. That's not the general maintenance of the home. How does the government think that they can tax us on that profit, which is not really profit. Because if you were to be in a business and you were to have purchased something, you would have depreciation. You would be able to write off that towards the overall income of the business. You would be able to write off the interest that you're paying. So if the government wants to play fair, then we should be allowed to write off the interest on our primary residence. Correct me if I'm wrong. I would love to have some accountants jump in here and say, you know, primary residence, what, what are we allowed to do? What are we not allowed to do here? So I think the government is completely off base, shocker, 
with their approach to this. But then again, we do have a drama teacher for our prime minister. And I don't know about you, but I think there's a far cry between drama and economics. And I don't think he has a very good grasp on how to actually fiscally run a country responsibly. So he is basically, they, whatever, generation squeeze, is saying that the housing inequity by adding a modest surtax on homes valued at more than $1 million. Where are we going to be in 10 years, folks? We saw housing double from 2015 to 2024 because of supply and demand. We don't have enough houses. The other issue that we have right now, as I've said all along, with these high interest rates, builders have stopped building. So if builders stop building, where are we going to be in three years from now? Because it takes approximately three years in order to build something, to buy a plot of land, um, go in, put on all the appropriate uh, zone changes that have to happen, put in a subdivision plan, get it approved, go through all the hoops that have to happen from a developmental stage to just get the land to the point where it's serviced and ready to build. So while all of that is happening, these loans that are associated to these properties are at a higher rate because they're commercial. They don't get the residential tax breaks, supposedly re interest rates that we do. They are paying a higher interest rate. So builders are not building right now. This is a big problem because in three years time, when we need even more properties than what we read, need right now, we will not have them available to us. So again, I will go back to supply and demand. This is where we're going to be, supply and demand. We don't have enough housing. So do you think that house prices are going to drop or do you think that they're going to go up? Like this, this is an absolute ludicrous and bombastic way to look at the perspective of housing that throwing yet another home equity tax on it, shoving it through and down our throats is actually going to do anything to increase the footprint that is required to service all of these millions of Canadians that you have led into the country and that we, the people that have already lived here and contributed to the taxation system, require. First, it was a foreign ban problem, foreigners problem. Put a ban on that. Then they put on a flipping tax. Put a ban on that. So now the next thing is, oh, our parents who worked hard, had jobs, paid their house off. They want to pull money out. They want to give it to their, their children. They want to do whatever they can. They want to downsize because the house that they live in, which, oh, by the way, they're classified as absolutely mega rich, according to our current government. They want to downsize and live more comfortably. They'll be taxed on that? I don't think so. I mean, we the people really need to stand up against this and we need to get in an appropriate government that actually is focused on the economy because adding new taxes are, it is not the answer to our country's issues. Taxes are not the answer. Good government, good leadership, and solid economic policies, those are the answers that we need in our country right now. We don't need any more immigration coming in. We actually need to fix the problem. The Financial Post article summed this up famously because the difficulties that we have are based on current policies and what the current government has been doing. And if there's no accountability and responsibility for the tax revenues that they are generating to really prop up the bloated spending of their policies and their political fortunes, we uh, I guess we just shouldn't even be surprised at this juncture at what's happening. So use your voices, write your MPs, write your provincial governance, write your federal governance. We need to make changes to this right now before something like this goes into place because it is absolutely not fair to the Canadian citizens. That's my little rant for today. Peace out. Love y'all. Ciao for now.